Like I stand here, I thought I'll update my iRacing triple screen without surround guide a little bit since the old one is nearly three years old and a few things changed. So if you want to set up your triples, you don't know how to do it on iRacing, this is the right video for you. Okay, we'll skip the unnecessary blah blah in the front and <laughs> just get right to it. Surround, yes or no? I would always recommend use surround. If you don't know what's worse about surround, then just use surround. There are a few cases where people do not want to use surround. In those cases, I mean, obviously go with regular triple screens without having them configured as a single display. But all the adjustments for iRacing are actually identical whether you use surround or not, so it doesn't really matter. But in other games, it makes your life much easier if you can use surround. The performance difference between surround and no surround is negligible. Sometimes one bench is faster, sometimes the other, it's the same speed. So before we start, go to your Windows settings, display settings, and make sure all these screens are on one line. Sometimes people ask me, they have like little offsets on the bottom or so, it doesn't really align perfectly. And most of the time that's because one of the screens is slightly offset. So just make sure they all sit in a line. It, it snaps in a little bit in place. If you have problems, that's the reason. I'll first show you how to do everything with a text editor and an iRacing. And then I show you a method with a tool that makes everything a lot easier. For iRacing, what you want to do is go to your documents folder, go to iRacing. And then scroll to the bottom, there's a file called renderdx11monitor.ini. If you don't have that file, start iRacing once on your monitors and then it will generate it. Open this with a text editor, we'll just use the default one here. And then you want to scroll to the very bottom till you see the section display. And what you want to set here is set the border to zero and also set full screen to zero. We want to use windowed borderless mode here. And then these are the important lines. So windowed height is the uh, resolution of your monitor, 1440p monitor. So the vertical resolution is 1440. And your windowed width is three times the horizontal resolution of your monitors. So in case of 2560 by 1440 monitors, you want to set it to three times 2560. And that is 7680. If you have full HD monitors, obviously 1920 by 3, set this to 5760. And then the windowed X position depends on your configuration. So again, check your display settings and check which monitor is your main monitor. If it's the middle one, like in my case, then you need to put an offset of minus your horizontal resolution of the monitor. So 2560 for 1440p monitors. If your main monitor is this one, then just set it to zero. It works like that. It basically puts the iRacing window in the top left corner of your main display. So if you want to move it to the left, you need to offset it by minus this resolution. Once you've adjusted these, you can do one more setting. Just search for triple. And then under user options, there's the drive UI full screen one. And that just means that you can put the black boxes on iRacing on the other screens as well. If you have this at zero, which I think is the default, then you cannot move them to the side monitors. So also put this to one. And then if you want to adjust them, Alt K, and then you can move them around. Okay, next thing is the angle. People always ask me, at what angle should I put the side monitors? In theory, there's an ideal value. So let's say we have 32 inch monitors. We are sitting 69 centimeters away from the screen and we are on triples. Bezels are what, five millimeters. Then this calculator will calculate the horizontal FOV for you. This is the one that we need for iRacing. And it will also calculate the ideal triple screen angle for you. Why can it calculate it? Because you want your eyes to be perpendicular to the monitors. That will be the perfect setup. I typically don't really follow this. I have my monitor set to 62, 63 degree or something like that. I just set it up by eye, look what's good and then go with it. I mean, even when you're driving, your head typically is not resting in one position. You will move around. So don't overthink it. Set it up in a way that makes sense. Don't have it too flat because then you're sacrificing FOV, obviously. But you don't have to adjust it perfectly, whatever this calculator is telling you. By the way, URL of the calculator will be in the description. So if you just set up your monitors, like in a whatever you think makes sense way, then go to the triangle calculator. Also a link for this in the description and then measure the width of your monitors pretty much. So let's say it will be 70 centimeters. Then this is the side monitor. This is the center monitor. 
And then what you want to measure is the distance between the left side of your left monitor and the right side of your center monitor. So pretty much if this is the left monitor, if this is the center monitor, you want to measure this distance. So let's say this is 115 or something. Delete this and click calculate. And then you get this. So this again, your center monitor, this your side monitor, and this is the distance between those monitors. And the actual value that you need is this one. And that is the angle between the monitors. Obviously, for whatever reason, every sim racing game wants to know the angle like here. So you need to do 180 minus 110 degrees. So in this case, it would be 70 degrees. If you have all these values, what you do next is open iRacing, go to options, graphic, and then go to the monitors tab. Make sure you enable these two checkboxes. And then if you're too close to big monitors, then the iRacing calculator will just not work. So here put in your monitor width, 722 millimeters in my case, put in the bezel width. It's typically a positive number. If you have the bezel free kit installed, then it depends. It could be zero. It could be a negative number. If, for example, the picture overlaps a little bit, play around with that in case you have the bezel free kit. Usually you can measure it. So put in the values here. Then put in the angle from the triangle calculator in here and then click on compute. The problem is if you are too close and your monitors are too big, then the iRacing calculator will just not work properly. But whatever. Let's put in something that it can work with. So if, for example, if I was further away from my screens, 69 centimeters, that would be an FOV of 169. Nice. Um, but in this case, you can see if I go to 630, it will already be at 179. If I decrease it, I'm around about 60 centimeters away from my screen. It will just not be able to handle it. So if you see 179, it might not be perfectly accurate. You might have to go with an external FOV calculator. But also, I mean, don't overdo this, what I'm saying now, but you don't have to follow the FOV super, super precisely. For example, the calculator for me, I think was like 184 degrees, but I prefer to use 190. I would say the plus minus of about 10 degrees is nice to handle, but just play around with the setting in slight variations to the calculator value and see what works the best for you. Anyways, I typically never use the in-game or the text editor or whatever. I use a tool called IR Sidekick Profiles. It's a free tool. You can create presets in this. The preset function is only for the paid version, but the free version can do everything that I'm showing you right now. So for example, here my monitor width 722, visible width excluding bezels is 724. Doesn't really make sense, but remember we set it to minus one, so we have to add two because two bezels. So 724. And then this is the di diagonal, hard to say, <laughs> across center and side screens. You can see here, oh, there's actually a picture and I try to explain it, uh, whatever. So measure that, put it in the, in here. Uh, you can also oh yeah, <laughs> enter diagonal width, then Suzuki method, yeah, or actual angle. So you can put in either the measurement or the angle. It will automatically figure it out. So let's say this was 13. Yeah, see, it will automatically calculate the angle for you. Viewing distance in my case is 600. And now you see the iRacing value was 179, but it's actually 186. This is also why the FOV math shows different values, because these values don't really make sense, you know. If I put in all these and it, it calculates 179, there's something wrong. So just click set to 186 and then you're good to go. And that's it. You can also set here where it should display. That would be just on the right screen. I want triple screens though, so I just click all of them. It automatically knows where your center monitor is, so it's super, super comfortable. I can highly recommend this IR Sidekick Profiles if you want to support the developer. I'm not getting any money for that. I just think the tool is excellent. I leave the link in the description down below for you to download it and buy it if you want to. I think it's really, really good. And that's what I'm using all the time to set up my iRacing. But that's pretty much it. That's how to easily set up your iRacing for triple screens, whether you're on surround or not. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, maybe subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below what you would like to see next in terms of tutorial videos. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.